Welcome back to the Chad AC Show on News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM KFYO. Joining me in studio right now, can officially say now, County Commissioner <laughs> for Precinct 2, it's Jason Corley. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. How are things going? Oh, great. Can't complain. You uh, were officially sworn in as a county commissioner, and, and you haven't been on the job long, but uh, the, already there's a lot of stuff happening, a lot of things popping up. Uh, so far, how, how are things going over at the courthouse? Oh, pretty good. Can't complain. Uh, you know, Chad and uh, Curtis and I all had to hit the ground running. But, uh, yeah, can't complain. We're doing well with it. Uh, you know, Looking at new trying to put together a road package to get us moving forwards still have the technology contract that's out there and you know, a lot of things that we talked about before the uh you know before we got in office and during the race are here in front of us right now and ready to act on it some of some of the the legwork that you did uh and and, and others uh mm-hmm. who were running uh, in in this race uh on the republican side uh the legwork that you you did before getting sworn in mm-hmm. do you think that's really kind of helped prepare you for uh you know really getting the hitting the job running uh when you were sworn in i think so uh, a lot of it for me was just doing you know research 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 yeah. uh just getting online looking uh i called a lot of different county commissioners from uh across the state saying well, okay well how did you guys do this or how did y'all handle that or uh, just perusing the headlines looking for uh you know different ways of doing business and already you you y'all have changed up uh just how meetings are run by allowing citizen comments which i think mm-hmm. it, it surprised a lot of people that Citizen comments were not allowed uh, before mm-hmm. uh, you guys were sworn in. So talk about that change and and how mm-hmm. kind of that discussion went about. And, and are there any other changes that you would like to see to, mm-hmm. to county commissioner meetings? Well, first things first, I'll say it before and I've said it. I'll say it again. Um, those who uh, refuse to participate in politics will be ruled by their inferiors. So you can always get involved with uh, campaigns and things like that but one of the best things that you can do now at lubbock county is come down and be able to speak on any issue that there's going to be discussion on uh i was really proud of curtis uh you know he did that right off the bat that was our our second uh second commissioner court meeting and uh you know he came in there to me and said hey are, are you good with this it's like yeah i campaigned on it that's great <laughs> okay chad looked at it and said the same thing he said oh that's awesome you know I'm glad you're I'm ready to do this and move forwards with it uh, we only had one person that came out and spoke that first time, but uh, a lot yeah. of people showed up and were just impressed that, you know, that was now the case. And a lot of people uh, just assumed, like you said, that uh, that you could come forth and speak. But uh, prior to this, before, uh, the only th- issues that uh, anyone could come forward and speak on were the ones that were state mandated to do so. Hmm. Uh, now with this, uh, you know, open session there at the beginning, uh, any issue that's on the that's on the agenda – you can come forward, state your piece on it, and you know, let your commissioners know how you feel about the issue. Yeah, uh, I think one of the the big issues, at least, that uh, made news last week, and I think y'all were down in Austin uh, mm-hmm. when uh, the news story uh, came out, or a couple of news stories came mm-hmm. out, is about uh, the, this roads package and the possibility <laughs> of a bond election uh, that uh, that could be called. No one really, you know, they're, they're it doesn't seem, at least in those articles, that anyone is really, uh, you know, in, in a full charge yet on uh, on a bond election. But tell us a little bit about this. Is there is there a push for a bond election as of right now? So uh, Lubbock County now has a – we now have a county engineer. Her name's Jennifer. Um, you know, great engineer. She uh, was told, put together a road plan. You know, Lubbock County's never had one before. It's always just kind of, you know, been running around just, you know, fixing potholes here and there. So – uh, the plan was, is, you know, just told her, go ahead and put something together for us. Let's look at everything that needs to be fixed. So they went out and talked to, uh, you know, some of the smaller towns in our county and talked to school districts, uh, anyone and everyone that would listen that had a concern and, uh, you know, put together, you know, a list of every, all the roads that needed to be fixed. And it came out to a little over $600 million, I believe. So, um, that's a lot of money. Well, you say 600 million and you know, the word, Oh no, they're going to bond 600. No, we're not bonding $600 million. That was yeah. not the idea at all. So that was just a list of everything that needs to get done. And does that, that include, that's a wish list. Does, does that include, by the way, roads that are not necessarily county roads? Uh, there was, there's going to be some funding in there. Uh, part of, part of that was for the South loop. So there was a big chunk of change in there for that one. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Woodrow road is on there. Uh, that was projected at about $35 million. Um, let's see some of the other things. Um, uh, so we kind of whittled that list down to about 180 million. 
And those are, you know, I mean, you got A priorities and B priorities and C priorities. And C priorities, well, we'll see if they get done. Right. But, uh, but uh, on the A priority side, it was down to about uh, – about eighty between eighty and ninety million dollars. Um, one of the things that we're looking at on there is that there's a lot of different funds available, and uh, right now the state of Texas is getting ready to uh, is getting ready to spend about nine billion dollars on infrastructure, and a lot of that money is going to get funneled right down I-35. So, you know, we want to see Lubbock County get their fair share. We want to see, you know, everybody in West Texas who's also paying into sales tax and all the other different taxes that we have in the state of Texas. We want to see them represented as well and also receive the benefit of that money as well. So, um, you know, that's what we've put together there. Uh, a good example would be Woodrow Road. It was projected to cost $35 million. So the first step on that would be to do the planning, which is under works right now. Uh, once the planning is done, you know, you've got that project sitting there on a shelf ready to go. When the MPO comes through, and there's a lot of projects in Dallas, Houston, Austin that uh, they don't have their environmental studies finished yet. So what will happen is now, um, you know, the state said, well, we had $45 million for this, but it's not ready yet. So they start looking around the state. Well, our tech stock guys go, hey, we got something for you right here, right now. So when you do that, it's an 80-20 split. You know, you, the Lubbock County taxpayer, would only have to pay 20% of the bill. So on a $35 million project, it would only cost you 7 and the state would foot the rest of that. Well, if you were to bond, if you were to bond, let's make sure we got that if nice and clear. Uh, if you were to bond for that money, then you would have, um, you know, you would still have another twenty-eight million dollars sitting there. Well, you could use that to fund the uh, the excuse me to fund the uh, engineering of your next projects. You know, maybe it's East Fiftieth that you need to work on, or the feeder roads that are going to be going into the new Loop Eighty-Eight. You know, that's going to be a big source of concern for us because Woodrow Road is already uh, too small for the traffic it's got on it. Well, what happens when we stop up parts of fifteen eighty-five to build a new loop? You know, you're going to compound those problems. No. Also, Cooper is building new elementaries and junior highs as fast as they can go. So we're yeah. going to uh, – Lubbock County, we're going to have to keep up with that. Uh, the idea that uh, we can just sit back and wait for the city to annex and cross our, fing our fingers and hope nobody gets killed on a road that's too small, uh, that's just not feasible anymore. Uh, annexations are probably getting ready to slow down drastically. So, uh, you know, as a county, we're going to have to start looking at ways to handle that traffic out there. So, so when when you when we're looking at a, a possible bond election, I mm -hmm. think the story said that – by February 12th, if, if you guys want this on an upcoming uh, May ballot, you've got to decide by February 12th. To you, do you think that's feasible to, to call for an election by February 12th? Because it sounds like mm -hmm. to me you also want to hear what state lawmakers mm -hmm. are going to do as well. So are, are we are, – are, is the timeline February 12th or are we going to wait mm -hmm. for you know the next election after if there's mm -hmm. going to be a bond election? Uh, if there is, a, if there were to be a bond election, uh, yeah, February twelfth would be the cutoff date. You have to put it on the uh, vote to put it on the ballot by February twelfth to get it on May to yes, get it on the May to get ballot. it in on the May ballot. That's okay. right. Um, uh, that's still a point of contention. That's still up in the air. The dollar amount uh, still has to be decided. Um, you know, we're still looking through the numbers, but you know, I don't have a solid answer for you yet on, wh on whether or not we're going to push to put that on the May ballot. What are you kind of feeling? Are you feeling? Are you leaning one way or the other on, uh -huh. on a bond election? Um, I want to fully understand the numbers. Um, I'm a little more in favor of November personally. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I was asking earlier. Is you know, yeah, it's the May ballot. Um, we I, wait a little bit longer to get more information. I would like to see it more on the on the. I, I'm leaning more towards the the November ballot. Just you know, let's leave a little extra time in there. And don't get me wrong; they've been working on this road study for a year now. It, it's not something that got thrown together in the last minute. Uh, you know, but, um, you know, let's kind of see where the legislature's at. Let's talk with our, uh, you know, our state reps or, uh, you know, let's talk with Dustin and Charles and John and say, hey, you know, let's, let's get your blessing on this going forwards. What do you guys, you know, what do you see coming down the road? Are we heading in the right direction? You know, as far as the state's concerned, does this line up with uh, with the state's, le with the legislature's goals? And, you know, if it does and we're ready, ready to move forward with it, then great. Uh, I'm all for that. Uh, Woodrow Road's a project that we, we need to get started on that one quickly. Um, so, you know, right now the study's been done. Um, you know, everything's in place. It's just deciding on the funding mechanism, how we want to go about doing it. Um, I don't know that a cash option, you know, pay as you go is really viable on this. Uh, you know, you've got too many projects that, that need to, you know, we're, we're playing catch up at this point with the growth in Lubbock County. Well, and, and, and not to, I'm not asking mm -hmm. you to bash previous members of the county commissioner's court, um, but how much is this? maybe not necessarily deferred maintenance on roads, but how much of this is past commissioner courts maybe not doing what they needed mm -hmm. to do and putting you guys in, in, in the position where it, a bond election is 
uh, something that you're you're seriously looking at. Well, I mean, shoulda, woulda, coulda. You know, if we, I mean, if we went because we, we, I mean, for as long as I've been doing this show, we've heard mm-hmm. from county, you know, mm-hmm. those running for county commissioner and from county commissioners, mm-hmm. we're going to fix the roads. We're going to fix the roads. We're going to fix the roads. Now we're hearing mm-hmm. six hundred and fifty, six hundred seventy-five mm-hmm. billion dollars in road repairs that need mm-hmm. to be done, and some of that's a wish list, maybe. But that's mm-hmm. to me, that sounds like a lot of uh, deferred maintenance. Uh, well, yeah, it's kind of like, uh, you know, you can change the oil on your car and it'll run 200,000 miles or you can not change the oil and just drive it until you need a new engine. And, you know, kind of here we are. I mean, um, there's some stuff that you can't project for, um, you know, there's some stuff that you can, uh, I am glad to see that we've got a County engineer again, that's going to help us out drastically. Um, but I'm not gonna throw all the blame on a previous court. I mean, you can go back two and three courts and look at it and say, well, you know, uh, I mean, going back to the Alton Brazel days when Lubbock was really Lubbock County was really aggressive at uh, building new roads, and but that's been eighties. Yeah. Um, you know, previous courts. I know uh, I graduated from Cooper in two thousand one. Woodrow Road was bad when I was in high school and needed an upgrade then. And you know, that's that's two courts ago. So um, you know, I think we've kind of kicked the can down the road on these, and well, here we are today. It's kind of. You know, I hate to say it, and nobody likes the idea of a bond, but it's kind of time to put up or shut up. We're going to have to do something. You can hang out one, one, one yep. more segment? Oh, sure. Okay, when we come back, we'll uh, continue to talk uh, about a possible bond election. There's also yeah. other county commissioner news that we can talk about as well. Chad AC Show, mm-hmm. KFYO. Chad AC Show News Talk, 95.1 FM, 790 AM, KFYO. County Commissioner Jason Corley in studio. I will say this, uh, one of the very few guests that uh, we've had on the show that knows how to use the cough button over here. <laughs> Did the allergies get to you while you were down in Austin? Is that oh, uh, man, now that's a good sign, a county commissioner that's allergic to Austin. Yeah, Texas. exactly. There you go. Well, maybe as you become a little more faint, never mind. <laughs> well, never mind. We'll move through that. Uh, a listener on the text line asking, where does money go from the road and bridge fees? Okay, so that goes into a fund specifically for maintaining your roads. Uh, Lubbock County, you got about 240,000 cars, so you've got about $2.4 million. Um, so that's where that money So that where, that's where that money goes. But it goes specifically to maintenance, not construction of roads. Hmm. Um, so a lot of your roads that get constructed, um, if you're inside of the, uh, the ETJ for, Lubbock, for the city of Lubbock, um, you know, developers are required to curb and gutter. And uh, then you know they'll they eat the they'll eat the cost of paving that road uh, as far as you know as far as uh, oh well right right next to their subdivision or whatever it is that they're building right now uh, once you get outside of the ETJ that requirement's not there um, so you kind of have to go back in the past look at your construction of roads uh, ad valorem taxes was used at one time to uh, take care of certain roads and certain precincts you know people in that precinct said you know. We're willing to put in a little bit more money to try to get the roads a little bit better. Uh, go back to the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, Indiana South's a good example of this. Uh, this neighborhood I grew up in was built about that time. Uh, you know, the developers are required to pave the road inside of the subdivision, but outside of it's not the case. So, ad valorem tax was used to pave those roads on you know South Slide, South Indiana University, uh, you know those areas. Okay. Um, the uh, one of the things that you ran on was uh, commissioner pay, and that you're yes. not going to raise your commissioner pay, and in fact you wanted mm-hmm. to lower mm-hmm. uh, commissioner pay. You, you've taken a step to uh, to do that. So I disagreed with the pay raises and the, the manner in which they were going about doing those. Uh, I didn't think it was right to give yourself first a 21 percent raise, and then I think it was another 17 percent raise. It worked out to about 41 percent, all said and done. So uh, what I did was uh, I rolled my payback to the uh, to the 2014 level. So I went from uh, eighty one thousand three hundred forty dollars, which is what it's currently at today, and bumped it back to the fifty seven six number that it was in 2014. So I, I don't like the idea of any any elected official being able to vote themselves a pay raise. Uh, even Congress has to go through an election cycle before they can receive that raise. So that way you get a chance to vote them out and decide are they worth the money or not. So what I have proposed is that uh, Lubbock County, we need to put together a uh, a board that uh, you know a volunteer board uh, citizens that will make recommendations to the court on uh, when they think the county commissioner should uh, should receive a raise. But one of the things that I want to do is uh, let's tie that raise you know not to a dollar amount that the uh, that this group will recommend to us, but to a percentage of the average income of Lubbock County. So right now it's about forty three thousand dollars. So, you know, make it – that group can tell us, okay, we want to pay you 1.2 uh, you know, times what the average person in Lubbock County makes. And maybe they set it once every two years, five years, ten years, whatever they feel it needs to be. 
So as the average income in Lubbock County goes up, the commissioner's salary will go up. If it goes down, well, theirs would come down with it. And, you know, then it will just kind of ride on that average income for Lubbock County. Because I just don't think it's a good metric to compare it to uh, the eight similar sized counties to Lubbock County. Because some of those are going to be next to Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, which uh, have much higher cost of livings than uh, than Lubbock County. You know, some of those, 81000 well, let's see, commissioner in uh, oh, uh, Travis County in Austin, uh, he pays, pays himself $90,000 a year. He's a little bit underpaid down there. Uh, that money doesn't go too far, right. uh, you know, in that in that area. Not with Google moving in and all the other other stuff that's going on. Uh, so, you know, is that really a good metric to compare to? I, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. You know, there's too there's too many variables there. But why don't we let that number just ride on the uh, on the uh, the on the dollar amount of the average income in Lubbock County? I but, think that'd be the best way to do and, it. And so you've you've set uh, you put in a letter an official mm-hmm. document rolling back your pay. Yep. So how is that going to work if if everyone's paid a, a different amount than than you are, or if other commissioners decide to roll back their pay? And mm-hmm. how's all this kind of going to work? Other, if the other commissioners uh, decide to do it, that's great, you know, and I appreciate them doing so. Uh, I know Chad had uh, he had elected to uh, he's going to take that pay raise and he's going to put it towards. Um, emergency services there in his precinct. That's how he wanted to do it. That's great. You know, go ahead. Uh, yeah. there, there's different ways to do it, but I think uh, Chad and myself and Curtis all agree we really want to create that advisory board to, you know, just make recommendations to the court, say, okay, this is what we feel it should be. Yeah. This is what uh, they do in Houston, San Antonio, DeBear, uh, Bear County, Harris County. It's uh, it's nothing new by any means. So where does that money go back to just as far as your, your pay goes? Where in my case, go? it's going right back into the general fund. Okay. Um, but, you know, we'll have budget seasons coming up, so yeah. won't be long. We'll decide what we want to do and go from there. Yeah. Uh, real, real quickly, the latest on the arena. There, there have been some stories that have mm-hmm. come out recently. You've got the South Plains Fair that they, they're, mm-hmm. they're making a lot of updates over there and, and making things look really nice. Uh, the the future of the the the, mm-hmm. the arena, it's mm-hmm. you know location is yet to be determined. How much it's going to cost yeah. yet to be determined. Is there any chance that you guys work with the South Plains Fair mm-hmm. in figuring out where this arena is going to be? Oh, I still like I still love that idea. Um, if I you know if I could wave a magic wand tomorrow, I'd say build an expo center where the fairgrounds uh, where the stock show barns are now. Put a big glass wall in that east window where it overlooks the canyon. And then uh, lease space for two hotels on either end of it because that's really what Lubbock needs. We need an expo center with an attached hotel. There's a lot of big uh, shows and uh, oh, uh, uh, different events that uh, go right past Lubbock simply because we don't have something with an attached hotel. Uh, I would love to see that built there and then a separate stock show facility uh, built next to it, You know, something like what San Antonio has. Which um, you know we're actually from what I'm told we're actually a bigger stock show uh, than than what San Antonio is, so we can go through there design something specifically for those. But yeah, um, all options are still on the table uh, right now. You know the Expo Center is still in its infancy. We still have to get word back from the comptroller on how much they think the tax is going to generate. Then we have to talk to the bonding company, see what they're willing to loan us before we can even do anything. Um, you know, there's there's nothing we can do yet until we know how much money it's going to cost. Who makes or to, the, it's going to generate? Who me. makes the decision on where it's going to be? How much the bond is going to be? Who who makes that decision at the end of the day? At the end of the day, the commissioner's court. Okay, and so have there been any talks at all with the with the South Plains Fair? Um, I haven't spoken with any of them directly. Uh, you know, there's. Yeah, you know, we've just kind of just been waiting on that number to come back. Right now, you know, uh, anything you want to dream up is fair game until we know what the dollar amount is. Uh, is there any timeline as far as when y'all expect to hear back from the uh, from the office? Uh, I was hoping that this was going to be mid February or so, but you know, that's you know they'll do it when they get done with it. That's kind of kind of where we're at. We're just uh, we're just waiting. We're just kind of in a holding pattern yeah, until the they tell us what period. we're going to do. Yep, exactly. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, with the stuff that's going on at the fair, it just, to me, it seems mm-hmm. like that would be a pretty good little marriage. I, I would think so. I talked yeah. to a lot of people that are in stock show that were really happy with the, with the, uh, some of the repairs and improvements they've made out there. Yeah. Jason Corley, County Commissioner, Precinct 2. Thanks for visiting with us. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me on, Chad.